Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of In the Bay. My name is Pestilence, and today we are going to be reviewing the 732B Highlander. That's right. We're diving into Star League technology here. We're going old school. And in a game where careers are measured in days, weeks, or sometimes even months, you should know to fear the old man. There's a lot of history here, so we're going to get straight into it. The Highlander is one of the most well-known Star League Defense Force assault mechs and has been serving well and for over two centuries. With an initial release date of 2592, this mech has had a long and storied career. Coming originally with 15 and a half tons of Star League era ferrofibrous armor, she is also clad in some of the best, one could even say the best, armor available at the time pre fall of the Star League. But sadly, as we found out with all Star League era mechs. Eh, lost tech was just that. A loss. And the Highlander was no exception to this. Once a gauze rifle was blown off a mech and blown up itself, could not be replaced. Same with that very valuable ferrofibrous armor. That was only good to anybody else that had a 732B, but get it replaced. It ain't happening. It's, nobody, it's not that they didn't know what it was, they didn't know how to make it anymore. Which, you know, today being carbon fiber is a thing. Kind of find that hard to believe, but apparently they use some you know, super secret sauce in the, the resin in that, uh, you know, unobtainium cloth weave. <laughs> Whatever they did, it had some of the best protection and it was light. So we could put either more armor on it or more weapons. Unfortunately, though, the secession wars took their toll, and um, the factory on its home world of San Hoa was devastated towards the end of the Second Secession War. The original 732Bs became virtually extinct, and, you know... The, uh, uh, the, the the surviving company was able to make an agreement with uh, a, a star corp called Hollowus Incorporated. Please, I, if I didn't pronounce that uh, correctly. Uh, to rebuild uh, destroyed chassis from scratch using readily available technology kept uh, kept the line going until the mid 3030s when limited production was restarted by Star Corps on San Hoa, its original homeworld. And uh, unfortunately, though, barely a dozen new mechs were produced each year. That's the problem with Star League Tech. You'd have a factory that was just sitting there and all they did was crank out double heat sinks. And all of those double heat sinks would be sold to a factory such as uh, 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 the one from Star Corps on 
uh, Sanhoa, and that could be the a limiting factor for them. Hey, we need more double heat sinks. Well, we can only make so many a year, and that's all you get. So, needless to say, that was a problem. And the the new Highlanders, the HGN seven thirty three Highlanders were used in small numbers by the Capellan Confederation and Larian Commonwealth, commonly as part of a lance uh, containing uh, exterminators, vin uh, victors, uh, I have problems with the victor, we'll get to that later, grasshoppers and catapults, that's right. They kept these mechs in the rear with the gear. Notice I said catapults. The catapults would stand behind the beat sticks i.e. grasshoppers and victors, and in this case, the 733 and 732 Bs. The, they had the LRM-20, so they'd be augmenting the catapults, putting rain on the enemy head while the victors and grasshoppers were taking a beating and putting lasers on target, the victor with that mighty AC-20 from its right hand. But I digress. <clears throat> Unbeknownst to many, though, Comstar also maintained a large stockpile of Highlanders left over from the Star League, rut row, some of which they gifted to the Draconis Combine during the War of 3039. Gee, what, what was going on in 3039? All oh, right, a secession war that they backed. The appearance of many seemingly rare 733s along with a few 732s whose advanced technology managed to slip through the Comstar screen had a large impact on the Larian morale. During that conflict, Comstar would also use the design and their own military forces, the Com Guard. And even during the <clears throat> clan invasion where space AT&T kicked the crap out of them. Now, there are many variants of the uh, Highlander. The 732, however, is special because you get it in the uh, vanilla Battletech game in the storyline. And if this doesn't become your command mech... You either got a lucky draw or you're doing something very different than me because I like the theory that big guns, well, big guns never tire. And neither does this machine. So let me, now, now that I've uh, read you part of its history, let's jump into its uh, a loadout down here. The 732B, now mind you, this is the stock one, uh, model is a upgrade from the classic 732, built exclusively for the SLDF Royal Units. That's right, th this is exclusively for the Star League Defense Force Military. That means they get all the whiz-bang stuff. The, the SLDF got together with the committee and said, yeah, we want all the whiz-bang things in this chassis, and this is how we want it laid out. And they pumped them out in the hundreds. This variant drops not one, but two heat, heat sinks. That's right, it had more heat sinks. And a ton of SRM ammunition so that the LRM-20 and the uh, SRM-6 both would have the Artemis fire control system added. Um, while the heat sinks were also upgraded to the double heat sink uh, variant. Mind you, this is from the factory. 
So we went from single heat sinks to double heat sinks. You know, it kind of, you know, for, you know how, it helps you forgive them for dropping two of them. <laughs> but let's move on. An additional short range firepower comes from an additional medium laser mounted in its right torso. But you know what else is in there? Not one, not two, but three. Clo uh, uh, close in fire support weapon mounts. And that is where my 732B shines. And this is the loadout that I have given the mech that I have called the Puppet Master. Now, the Puppet Master, yeah, let me, let me uh, straighten things up a little bit here for you. It's a good mech. It's a really good mech, and this is why. Um, she does not mince words. She doesn't futz around. I can't uh, seem to. There we go. We'll get it. We'll get everything together now. There we go. She could put down the boom boom, and this is why. Advanced gauze rifle upgraded from the standard gauze rifle, so I save two tons and a critical hit slot location. I added an ultra auto cannon two plus ten damage on both shots, minus two tons. So for the same weight of a large laser by itself, I get to put 70 points of damage downrange versus a large laser's... Oh, God, what is it? Talk about a brain fart at a bad time. 40 points. So, I, you know, it's 5 points less for a single shot, but I get a plus 10, so now I'm over. I'm put, putting down an additional 5 points per shot, and I get 2 of them. That's double the pleasure, double the fun. And it doesn't build the, the, the massive amount of heat that a, a large laser would. But I digress. This arm mod, plus 10 points to the punch, which is not a lot. But it adds zero tonnage to my weight. So, f -f 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 freebie! Moving on down the line, though, to the right torso, we have three magna, or magnum, Medium lasers that give plus 10 points of damage each. Maximum range of 270 meters. 35 points of damage on target. And I just... What, what more do you want? I just, I'm standing here with my arms spread. What more do you want? I'll tell you what more I want. I want to have point defense weapons for those, you know, close-in knife fights. I'll go one better than that. Standard short-range weapons only reach out to 90 meters. The ER small lasers from the Star League reach out 150 meters. And these have a plus 10-point bonus. So a standard small laser does 30 points of damage. This one does 40 Standard small laser only reaches out 90 meters. This is one reach out, reaches out an additional 60 meters for the boom boom. The problem is, is that each one of those small lasers, you can pay at the black market. The highest I've ever seen them is a, a cool million. For one... And that was with a 10% discount. They liked me. So, uh, I still bought it. <laughs> Moving on, though. Uh, I'm not running the best heat exchangers I, I have in my inventory on this mech. 
that goes on Connor McLeod, the very first one I ever put together. But this one is my start or, or is my flagship mech. Uh, for various reasons. Uh, so I've got twenty five points, or excuse me, twenty five percent less heat from each one of my weapons when it is fired. Unfortunately, this does cost me a cool five tons. I don't know if it stacks. I'd have to actually look into that, but um, yeah, twenty five percent off of the top. So, you know, makes a difference, right? I am running two of the six double heat sinks that this mech would come with stock. Um, needless to say, I put them in the legs because if you notice, whenever the enemy fires at you, they hit your torso significantly more often than they hit your legs. And I'm running up armored Across to everything. I'm up armored. So. I don't really fear. Getting my legs swept out from underneath me. Uh, that being said. The. Connor McLeod. Is one ton lighter. Than the Puppet Master. Which is the exact same build. Except for the heat exchangers. The Connor McLeod's running. A single negative 20. And I'm running two at negative 10 and negative 15, respectively. So, you know, five tons minus four tons. The Connor McLeod is one ton lighter. So the Connor McLeod, even though it has the exact same weapons loadout, minus the zero ton arm mod, um, has an additional ton of ammunition or a, an additional ton of armor so that's the only difference between the two mechs this one is 32 points overall more squishy than the, the than the connor mcleod that's the only difference so it's the same build the gyro is a plus three defense for weapons fire, so it's like, what, 15% harder f to hit from the enemy? It's not much, but I'll take it because my mech can twist its torso and, you know, dip and dive a bit more. Uh, yes, I did put the AC2 ammunition in the uh, left leg, and that's because if the left leg is blown up, or critical... If the left leg is critted, and they hit the AC2 ammunition, and it explodes, that explosion is going to go up the mech, and what is above the left leg on the critical hit chart? The left torso. Now, the left torso, if that gets blown off, I also lose the left arm, obviously. Now, it would really suck, because I run hardcore games, to lose that double heat sink. But that's a heck of a lot easier of a, of a bitter pill to swallow than losing a double heat sink. And two heat exchangers, two tons of valuable gauze rifle ammunition, three ER small lasers at an average cost about 600,000 C-bills each. And a 4.5 million C-bill gauze rifle. That's all really hard to, to, to swallow over here. So all the expensive stuff is on one side of the mech. The other side of the mech is the shield mech. Just like it says on a claymore when you're in the military. If you ever look at a claymore, it actually says on the explodey bit side, this side towards enemy... That is the left side of this mech, so as you're using this mech, if you use my build, always keep your left side towards the enemy. You'd much rather, trust me, you'd much rather lose an SRM-4 than an SRM-6. You'd much rather lose the SRM-4 and SRM-6 than anything on the right side of this mech. 
mind you, if you're playing with mech destruction, if the center torso gets blown up, everything on this mech disappears. It's just gone. It's scrap. Including the two, upwards of two million C-bill comm system if you buy it on the black market and they don't like you. <clears throat> just saying. Um, so yeah, there's that. But let's look at the technical readout of the stock mech, and then we'll compare it to the technical readout of my mech. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to start over here with heat efficiency. Now remember, the stock 732B has... 96 points of heat dispersal every six or every single turn. That means if the mech jumps and creates 77 points of heat, you are still exceeding your Mac or your heat generation is, ex is being exceeded by your ability to dissipate that heat by 19 points. This means if you get stuck with a stock loadout in a desert biome that is hot and your mech only disperses 75% of the heat that it generates, eh, you're still doing pretty good. You're still going to be fighting. So heat buildup is not a problem at all in the stock 732B. It might be a little bit if you are in a vacuum, but that's it. Moving on. Firepower, 302 points. Mind you, the stock 732B does not have any point defense weapons. So if it would have added on just three small lasers at half a ton apiece. Uh, the stock 732B would increase its alpha strike at 90 meters, mind you, by 90 points. So you have to... You'd have to do just drop a ton of ammunition from the LRM, and you are two thirds of the way there. That's yeah, you know, that's how I look at it. Three hundred and two points of damage using the stock seven thirty two B. Let's remember that three hundred and two points of damage at two hundred and seventy meters. Okay, average range. Where 732B is 250 meters, maximum range is 660. 660, 250. Let's also remember those. The durability is rated at a 9. A 9. Structure is 691 points with armor 1400 overall. Mind you, if you do a DFA, you will take 115 points of damage to yourself. Just saying. Mind you, if you get uh, 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 leg modifications, you can mitigate some of that. Melee damage, you know, she's a rock'em sock'em robot. You know, 90 ton mech does a punch. Nine, 90 points. But Chas Quirk's given another 25. That's 115 points. Bam! To one location. Unfortunately, again, I maintain the statement that it has no point defense weapons. Which means after you punch the guy, you get to follow that up with silence. My mech has point defense weapons. You get to fi follow up the punch with not one, not two, but three small laser or small lasers being fired into the enemy and that's the way i like it uh that's honestly the the stock 732b it's with the exception of not having any point defense weapons it's got something for everybody 
if you drop that uh, LRM20 down to an LRM15, you'll have more than enough weight to put on your three-point defense weapons. If you're using machine guns, then you can add on uh, uh, ammunition for them. Um, if you're using uh, uh, small lasers, you don't have to do anything else. Just add more armor because guess what? Your your heat negative still. But let's go on to my build here. My heat efficiency is 72 points of heat dispersal, 75 points on an alpha strike at 150 meters. If I, that's, that's right, I only build three points of heat. If I jump, that's nine points. If I jump towards you and fire, and I get within that 150 meter bubble, I can fire every single weapon I have on this mech at you at 90, 85 plus, uh, you know, uh, a reasonable expectation to hit. That's one gauze rifle, two AC2s. Three medium lasers, three small lasers, and a total of 10 SRMs screaming at you. By the way, every single one of these weapons is plus damage. Except for the, okay, it's not, not the gauze, gauze rifle, but 75 points from the gauze rifle. Two, two taps from the AC2 at 35 points. Three taps from the medium lasers at 35 points. Three taps of, from the small lasers at 40 points. That's right, my, my small lasers do more damage than my medium lasers do. Ten taps of, was it ten damage apiece for those SRMs? Oh, I'm sorry, I told you wrong. Twelve. Twelve times ten. Because these are valiant short-range missile systems. So, 12 times 10, that's 120 points. Just those two weapons. 35 times 3. Well, 30 times 3 is 90, plus another 15. That's another 105 points. Oh, and that, that's at uh, 270 meters. And because they're energy weapons, infinite ammo. We'll get into the ammunition usage here in a second of, uh, for the SRMs. Yes, I'm only running one ton. That means 10 volleys of both these weapons. So 10 continuous rounds of both those uh, uh, weapons firing. Also 270 meters. But the piece de resistance creme de la creme. Maximum range of, it, of an AC2 is 720 meters. 35 points of damage. 25 for the base weapon plus another 10. Oh, look at that. Isn't that a magic number right there? Maximum range, 660 meters for the gauze rifle, 75 points of damage. Unfortunately, it does give you diminishing returns at 180 meters. So the closer you are to the enemy, the less accurate you are. But that's okay, because the AC-2 also has a minimum range of 120 meters. So, I mean, there is a magic bubble right before you get to use your small lasers where you're going to start getting diminishing returns. But if you can put these uh, ER small lasers at their maximum range, you're going to get minimum drawback for your uh, difficulty to hit from the gauze rifle and from the UAC-2. You'll still have decent uh, efficiency to hit. Now let's talk ammo usage for a second. Gauze rifles only get 8 rounds per metric ton of ammunition. 
So guess what? Two tons of ammunition gives you 16 rounds, obviously, which my personal rule for ammunition and ammunition-fed weapons is 10 turns. At 10 turns, I mean, you, you still have six, six rounds to go with the gauze rifle. You can keep ammunition going down range for another six turns. And honestly, if the battle's gotten to your 10th turn, either it's a really long mission or you did something wrong. Or it was an ambush. <sighs> I can't help you there. The, the Ultra AC2, the Ultra Auto Cannon, well, that fires two shots per turn. The ammunition's over here. Let's look at this. 25 shots per ton of ammunition that that ammunition will last you for let's do the math 25 divided by 2 anybody anybody 12 complete rounds of of fire whereas on your 13th round you will only fire one shot instead of two and then on your uh, 13th round, you only get one, one shot instead of two. That, that's the, the, the best that, that I can do. But still, it's, it's really, really ammunition efficient. On the uh, SRM side, I remember, my personal rule is 10 rounds of continuous fire You know, in, in, the, in the perfect world. And you fire an SRM-10. Let's do the math here. 10 rounds is 100 rounds needed to make your 10th round. Look at that. 100 rounds of ammunition per metric ton. This meets the minimum requirement. So every, let's, let's, every single turn in a perfect world, you, know, you engage the enemy. You're able to do an alpha strike first first turn. You jump forward. You alpha strike. Again, doing this by the numbers, I build six heat for jumping. On top of the 75, six plus 75 is 81. I sink the heat. And guess what? 81 minus 72. That's right, I built nine points of heat. By the heat alone, I can keep this up for ten turns and not cross a uh, uh, shutdown at 90 points. Or at 100 points, you shut down. The second turn, all you have to do even if you have to jump to stay engaged, is not fire one, just one of the ER small lasers, and you will go back to zero heat at the end of the turn. And remember, as much as possible, keep your left side facing towards the enemy, and you will, you know, You'll, you'll obviously lose this side first, but you, you'll prevail because you're going to keep your damage dealers protected. Let's look, at, let's look at this firepower. 490 point alpha strike at 150 meters, 55 points of, of stability lost, which is, hold on, 302 minus 490. I, I'm doing better than the stock, obviously, because I've upgraded so much. Uh, heat efficiency... You know, I, I am building heat, but only in the hottest of biomes under the most extreme conditions where you have to keep firing these 150 meter small lasers turn after turn after turn after turn. Do you even have to worry about your heat? And it's more like a footnote. Hey, hey, maybe you should check this out after a couple turns. Movement of the uh, Puppet Master Highlander 732B is the same as the stock mech because I kept three jump jets on it 
And let's face it, in this iteration of the game, you cannot swap out engines. The average firepower, though, or average range for your firepower, went from 660 meters, or for maximum range, went from 660 to 720, because I added that UAC2, which has so much more reach in it. The optimal range, though, dropped to 219 meters again because of the ER small lasers. But let's let's face it, if you would have had a ni three 90 meter weapons in there, it would have taken a much larger hit. The durability went up because I instead of having 1,400 points of armor. I have 1680. That's right. I added 280 points of armor overall to this battle mech. The self damage on the on the death from above is the same because uh, I put double heat sinks in my legs instead of uh, uh, shock absorbers. That was a choice I made. <clears throat> you may do something different with your mech. Melee though is a touch higher because. I have a zero tonnage arm mod. That's right. You can find these. Plus 10 melee damage. I think you can even find one for plus 20 and get zero tons on it. It is a triple plus uh, arm mod. Those are hard to find, but you know what? I I'll take it. it it's It's... No additional tonnage. It just takes up critical hit slots. And anything that if armor was to breach my right arm, the last thing I want to have happen is have that gauze rifle explode. So, um, yeah, anything that will add chances to not have that gauze rifle explode is a plus in my book. So, 120. 25 point punch just became a 135 point punch that will then be fire followed up by three small lasers hitting at 40 points a piece the puppet master as you as you see it here this particular highlander 732b is a threat at every range from long range from the gauze rifle and and uac2 to medium range again gauze rifle uac2 uh, uh medium lasers at uh, 270 meters srm sixes or srm six and srm4 for a total of 10 srms at 270 meters and at 270 meters and below. Diminishing returns for the gauze rifle in UAC2, though, whenever you start using the ER small lasers at 150 meters, but still really combat efficient. Honestly, the last thing that you want to be forced into doing is punching with this mech, because then you're giving up a lot of firepower for not a lot of return. But, you know, sometimes you want to save on ammunition. I understand. If you do not fight, if you punch one, t if you, let's say you've done five continuous alpha strikes and there's no end to the enemy in sight that you can see and you're relatively protected because you're smart using your cover, punch somebody because whatever residual heat that you have built up is going to go away because you're not going to be firing the gauze rifle, the UAC-2, three medium lasers, and SRM-6 and SRM-4. You're only going to be firing three ER small lasers for a total of 30 points of heat. You sink 72. If you built up 50 points of heat over the last five turns... Uh, or excuse me, 45 points of heat over the last five turns of continuous alpha striking, you can reset it to zero with a single punch, in which case you got something in there too. And the last thing that I have on this mech is this 
plus four resolve communication suite. This this is the best that is in the game. I used it used to be a three plus was the best that was in the game, but now it's a four plus. And I'll tell you that uh, uh, resolve bonuses for your special maneuvers, maneuvers for your precision strike, for your vigilance. Uh, uh you know that replenishes like this. And that's why I've built my Highlander 732B with this particular loadout. Could I get more Alpha Strike out of it? Yeah, the only way I can you can get more of an Alpha Strike out of it is if you replace the SRM-4 with an SRM-6. But in order to do that, you'll have to dr drop a ton of something. I could drop the... A, a ton of gauze rifle ammunition. No, I'd rather fire the gauze rifle for another eight turns. I could drop um, the heat exchanger from a three ton to a two ton. But my heat would go up, plus I'd be produce, producing more heat from a twin SRM-6. So I'd go from, what is that? eight points to 12. Yeah, so I'd be producing another four points and I would be lowering the amount of heat that I dissipate. Now, I'm, I'm okay there. Um, that it really runs you out of options. I, I have made this mech as heat efficient as, as I could. I would like to make it more heat efficient, but I'd have to give up something. I would like to make this mech hit harder at all ranges, but again, if I do that at any one range, I have to give up something somewhere else. This mech is optimized for its heat efficiency across all ranges in order to maintain zero heat, drop an ER small laser off of it, and you will build zero heat. And then you gain a half a ton of armor back. Uh, drop you. Uh, well, no, if you drop a heat exchanger, you build more heat, and you can disperse it with another heat sink. But you 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 raise the the heat cap that you can that you also produce. So that is why. I built the Puppet Master and Connor McLeod with identical builds. My name is Pestilence. This has been In the Bay for the Highlander 732B. Until next time, good hunting, mech warriors.